Hello learners, I welcome you all in yet another video lesson of DLED of NIOS course code 509 which is teaching of social sciences. Today we are talking going to talk about unit 8 on learning resources in social science and into that the today's topic is types of learning resources, graph, charts and cartoon. Before moving on the lesson, I would just want to share with you the proposed flow of the lesson. First of all, I would going to share with you the lesson guide. Then I am going to share with you the expectations. Then we will discuss about the learning resources, concept, need and importance. Then we are going to discuss about types of learning resources. Then we are going to specifically talk about graph, charts and cartoons their specification and use. At the end, we will recapitulate and there is a take home task for you. Now to share with you the lesson guide, during the presentation, I will explain and exemplify the different concepts. You should follow my voice and the slides as well. You will find important words and sentences, etc. have been highlighted to facilitate retention. I have also summarized the main points at the end to have a quick glance for better retention. There are some questions or exercises in between and at the end of my presentation, you are advised to attempt these questions or exercises after going through this video lesson. Now to share with you the learning objectives or the expectations after going through this video lesson. After going through this video lesson, you would be able to know the concept need and importance of learning resources, particularly in social sciences, then you would be able to classify the learning resources as per their feature, then you would be able to develop and use graphs, charts and cartoon in social sciences classroom. Now coming on what makes learning effective, let me pose a situation on you. What kind of learning would be considered as effective? Only by listening, only by listening and watching or by listening, watching and action. What would be your answer? I think you are going to go with the third one which promotes the experiential learning and by engaging almost all the senses of a child or a learner we are ensuring effective learning and for engaging and ensuring effective learning, we are using learning resources. Therefore, learning resources can be defined as anything. Anything means a person, material, situation or experiences, whatever facilitates students learning. That can be called as learning resource. Learning resource may be used by the teacher, by the student, or both during instruction to maximize learning. Mind it, the motive or the objective of using learning resources is to maximize the learning outcome. The use of learning resources facilitate active involvement as well as the participation on the part of the students into the learning process and the use of learning resources also facilitate bridging of new and prior knowledge. Now coming on the need and importance of learning resources, why learning resources should be used in the classroom? Learning resources make teaching and learning effective because they ensure the engagement of both the students into the learning process and active engagement of the teacher into the learning process which makes the learning resources effective. Learning resources help the learners to achieve the learning objectives more effectively and efficiently. Learning resources also help in clarifying, interpreting and appreciating concepts as they exemplify different dimensions of the concept and different angles of the concept. Learning resources provide clarity, precision and accuracy in processing information. Learning resources also help students to learn faster, remember longer, gain more accurate information as they concretize the experience of learning. 
learning resources can be used to create learner readiness sometimes and learning resources also help in retention of the learned concept as I have mentioned earlier also learning resources are capable of providing real to or almost real experiences in the classroom which a lecture cannot bring to the classroom. Learning resources also provide learners opportunity to learn individually in small group and in large group through the help of learning resources for example these days we are using MOOCs we are using internet which can facilitate individuals learning at their own space with their own pace and also it facilitates small group learning and also in large group learning so variety of learning uh, resources can be used to promote different kind of learnings among our learners what are the different kind of learning resources we are having which can be used in social science classroom now discuss that thing on the basis of the availability and location we can categorize learning resources into four categories learning resources which are available within the classroom such as textbook blackboard and other things which are there situated in the classroom then learning resources which are located in the library such as reference books maps charts which are there in the library then we are having learning resources which are situated not in the classroom not in the library but in the school for example we are having trees we are having water tap or other kind of things which are you which can be used to exemplify something in the classroom which is related to the content which needs to be delivered in the classroom then we are having learning resources which are situated or available within the community for example a museum is there in a community which can be used to teach history or a topic in history to our student then on the basis of print nature we can categorize our learning resources into two categories one is print categories or print learning resources and the second one is non-print learning resources then on the basis of dimension we can categorize the learning resources into three categories. One is unidimensional such as charts, maps, etc. One is two-dimensional such as uh, uh, thermocall sheets and the things which are pasted or tactile maps. These are two-dimensional. Then we are having three-dimensional things such as model and other things. So on the basis of dimension, we are having three broad categories. Now moving on the learning resources which are popularly used in the teaching of social sciences we are having relia and diorma relia and diorma relates to the real things which have been usually used in teaching of history then we are having maps and globes then we are having models then we are having graphs charts and cartoons we are having timelines books newspaper clippings museums mu movies internet school and community these are different kind of learning resources which have been popularly used and are popularly used in the classroom now coming on today's topic learning resources in which we are going to discuss our first uh, subtopic which is charts what we mean when we use the term charts charts refer to a simple flat pictorial display material which is if used appropriately conveys the displayed information in a highly effective manner just think about your teaching practice I think chart is the most common teaching aid with all of you carry with you while teaching in your classroom or for teaching in your classroom how we can use the chart we can use chart to classify important information to be referred to a number of time it's a kind of preserved learning resource which can be used again and again within the same class or afterwards in different class so we can use chart to classify important information to be referred to a number of times within the class or after the class in other class then we can use chart to summarize and simplify complex ideas with student facing during their reading so in a way chart saves our time 
when we are summarizing, when we are using it for summarizing and simplifying or breaking the complex ideas into different part to make student understand. Now, what kind of charts we are having which have been used or which are used in the class, we are having different categories of charts. We can use narration charts. Narration charts narrates the story through picture and figures. They portray historical development or depict steps in a procedure such as how a bill becomes law. For example, if you prepare a chart on a motion of house of parliament uh, and show it to your student, it will come under the category of narration charts. Then we are having tabulation charts. Tabulation charts present data in the form of table in order to facilitate making comparison. Then we are having relationship charts. Relationship charts show cause and effect relationship. Examples are factors related to environmental pollutions, population exam explosion, etc. If you bring these kind of things into your classroom or if you exemplify these kind of concepts on a chart, it will come under the category of relationship charts. Then we are having pedigree charts. Pedigree charts shows development that have a single origin such as the lineage of a family, how a family is emerging and growing. If we are showing that thing that comes under the pedigree chart. Then we are having classification charts. Classification charts point out various kinds of relationship such as those for agricultural industries, modes of transportation, etc. Then we are having organizational charts. Organizational charts shows the internal structure of organization such as corporation or government bodies. Then we are having flow charts, most popularly used type of charts. Flow charts shows stemming a process such as the manufacture of steel, how the steel is manufactured in an industry. Now I am going to show you some examples of the charts which are of different nature. First we are having on screen the anchor chart. In this anchor chart we are showing the modes of transportation which are there on land, in water and in the air. This is the simplest charts which your student can also prepare and you can also prepare. Now coming another type of anchor chart, another form of anchor chart in which we have shown the water and land forms. In water forms there are rivers, ponds, lakes, ocean and in land forms we are having mountain, desert, hill, plain, valley, coastal areas etc. Now, on your screen, there is another type of anchor chart which shows again the landforms. All the landforms have been shown on this chart. Now we are having a tabular chart on your screen in which we are having a tabular data or we have tabulated a data for communicating in a better manner to the student. Then we are having organizational chart. There is an organizational uh, chart on your screen where we have shown an organizational structure of a company or an organization uh, on your screen. Now we are having a flow chart in which the human population and its effects have been shown. How the human population is growing and what kind of effects it is making on our earth or to the civilization. Now coming on the graph as a learning resource which is the second subtopic for today's lesson. When we talk about graph, what the term graph literally means? The graph is a mathematical diagram which shows the relationship between two or more sets of number or measurement. Graphs could be two dimensional or three dimensional also. So mainly the graph are the mathematical diagram that shows the relationship or the interaction between two sets of data or the measurement. The prominent uses of the graph are, graphs are excellent means of presenting quantitative data in an enabling pupil to understand fundamentals or specific relationship. Through graphs, we can easily communicate the relationship between two sets of measurement to our pupil all the learners. Now 
what kind of skills are required to use graph on the part of the teacher as well as on the part of the students because graph are in a nature some kind of technical teaching resource or a learning resource which needs some kind of specific skills. So, ability to understand the significance of the title, to understand the basic units of the measure used in the construction of the graph, to interpret the relationship shown in the graph, to draw inferences and important generalization based on the data and to relate information derived from graphs to that gained from reading and other sources of the information. As a teacher, when you are going to use graphs in your classroom, you need to have all these kind of skills and also you need to facilitate the growth of these skills amongst your pupil also so that graph could be used as an effective and meaningful teaching aid in the class. Now coming on different types of graphs, we are having column bar graphs. Column bar graphs are the simplest and most straightforward way to compare various categories and is often the classic column based bar graph. Then we are having line graphs. Line graphs are the powerful visuals, tooks and illustrate trends in data over a period of time or a particular correlation. Then we are having pie graphs. Pie graphs used to clarify proportionate share of different things within the whole. We are having a circle and within a circle we are having different sectors which used to exemplify the proportion that particular phenomena or the share of a particular thing which is there within the whole. Then we are having pyramids. Pyramids are visual representation of two sets of information on selected parameters. Then we are also having scatter plot graphs. Scatter plot graphs are the graphs which consist of two axes, each representing a set of data in the form of scatter dots and the objective of scatter plot is to show the spread or the cluttering of the data. As we move on, I would exemplify the pictures of each of the graph. Then we are having stacked area graph. Stacked area graph are ideal for comparing value that would normally require multiple line graphs. Each line represent a different category and the area below each line is generally shaded a designated color so each data set can be easily compared. Now look at your screen, we are also having uh, Venn diagrams. Venn diagrams are also known as the logic diagrams, illustrates all possible logical relationship within a designated collection of sets. For example, the overlap of two circle, one representing national government and other representing state government visually represent that powers that are retained by both bodies. For example, we are having different list in our constitution which represents the power. So those list, for example, concurrent list, state list and union list could better be exemplified with the help of Venn diagram. Now coming on the examples of different graphs on your screen, there is an example of bar graph which is showing the population growth in India by decade. It's an a uh, simple kind of bar graph. On x axis it is showing the year and on y axis it is showing the percentage growth in the total population of India. Now we are also having line graph on your screen. Line graph is also uh, showing the population growth in India but in absolute terms. Now there is a pie graph on your screen. Pie graph is showing the age distribution in India in 2011. Uh, as per the 2011 census of India. Then we are having pyramid graph. Pyramid graph on the one side there is an India in 2014 and on other, another side the data of China is represented in 2014. Then we are having stacked area graph in which different line graphs have been combined to show the percentage of world GDP from year 1700 to 2008 and the area is representing the same. Then we are having Venn diagram which is showing the concept of sustainable development. 
Sustainable development is in combination of social, economic and environmental development combined together is called the sustainable development. It is easy to understand by the use of visuals in your craft and thereby the charts and graph are the very powerful medium to ensure effective learning in the class. Associated with that, we are also having cartoons which is an emerging area of learning resources, uh, a kind of learning resources which are used by the teachers in the class. What a cartoon mean? When we uh, use the term cartoon, what we mean? Cartoon is a simple drawing showing the feature of its subject in a humorously exaggerated manner, especially a satirical one in a newspaper or a magazine and from there we can pick up and use it in our classroom. We can also draw cartoons. If you are good in drawing, you can also draw, draw cartoons and you can uh, send a message or give a message to your learner in a very, very light manner. What kind of uses are there for the cartoons in the classroom? We can use cartoon to create a kind of visual relief to our learners. Cartoons can also bring fun in the class Hence, appeals learner cartoons if give the space to take a detour and get into a side discussion that is often richer than the main one. When we use different kind of a divergent learning resources, it gives birth to a different kind of discussions in the classroom. It invites different kind of opinions in the classroom, different kind of reactions in the classroom, which if used, uh, may be richer than the one which is usually or traditionally could be generated in the classrooms. So, coming on the types of cartoons, we can have animated or moving cartoons or motion cartoons and we can have still drawings. Still drawings could be colored or black and white line drawings or pictures. Any kind of still drawing is comes under the category of still drawing which is which can be a colored or black and white. Now coming on the examples, what kind of different cartoons which we can use uh, in our class? I have brought some for your reference. Just look the cartoon which is there on your screen which is showing a candidate is debating in a presidential debate to acquire or to influence the voters of his or her constituency uh, during the uh, election season. Now there is a second cartoon on your screen which is exemplifying the concept of illegal immigration. There is a thief kind of person, thief looking person who is crossing the boundary and a dialogue is written over there. I am going as illegal immigrant. A single dialogue can speak a lots of volume about immigration or the exchange of people from one boundary to another. Now there is an another cartoon on your screen which is speaking about problem of globalization in which the characters are a mother, a son and a father. And all are talking something about uh, this globalization and this is highlighting the problem of globalization. Now coming on the uh, cartoon on social identity and then there is a cartoon on equality in which all the children are cheering and it has been written all children have equal rights. So we can use this cartoon while teaching equality as a fundamental right in our class. Then we are having a cartoon on citizenship value in which a person is exemplifying his or her responsibility as a good citizen. Now there is an amazing cartoon which has already been used in NCF 2005 to exemplify the individual differences in our class which says that for a fair selection everybody has to take the same exam. Please climb that tree and there are different animals which are standing and listening to a master or a teacher. So it is a kind of satirical cartoon. Now to sum up, in order to sustain the interest of the students in social science and to promote abilities of creative thinking, 
problem solving and logical reasoning, use of learning resources in the social science classrooms becomes essential. Resources are available within the classroom, within the school and also within the community. They can be classified on the basis of print and non-print material amongst visual resources, graph, charts and cartoons have been discussed and exemplified in details in this lesson. Now it's time for take home task. Choose any topic from the social science textbook of class 8 and prepare a lesson plan using charts, graphs and cartoon as learning experiences. Meet you in the next lesson. Bye then. Thank you.